Hey everybody, Rich with PCC. I want to talk to you for, uh, for a minute about your 24 volt DC uh, control circuits and the power uh, that you supply to those circuits. Uh, obviously, you're making use of, of 24 volt DC power supplies. You're putting some form of AC in, whether it's 110, 230, 463 phase. You're putting that on the input side of that, that uh, power supply, and then you're getting your, your DC voltage on the output. We are seeing a, a variety of voltages today on the output side of these power supplies. Sometimes you need 5 volt, 12 volt, 24 volt is obviously popular, uh, but uh, lots of different outputs. But where I want to go today is the diagnostics capabilities of uh, the Siemens um, uh, electronic diagnostic module. Uh, the reason for that is if you have a short circuit occurrence on the output side of your power supply, uh, you are crowbarring that power supply. And what that means is the, the power supply is going into a protection mode, but it's not supplying any of that 24 volt DC power uh, out to the circuit anymore. So essentially your whole 24 volt uh, DC circuit goes dead uh, because you have a problem on the output of that power supply. And the trouble is, uh, usually what I see from a design perspective is I'll see on the output side of a power supply, I'll see a bunch of miniature circuit breakers or fusing, and that's what breaks out the control circuits. The trouble is these devices don't pick up those, those small issues in the circuit and they don't trip. So you get that crowbarring effect on the power supply. So as you can see here, if I go ahead and turn on my, my DC circuit, I've got my motor running here. I can also see that I've got my, my red light illuminated. And so I just here, I have a, a standard 24 volt DC power supply. Uh, with and, and the output is it goes through a miniature circuit breaker. Uh, you can see it goes through that circuit breaker because as I switch it, that red light goes on and off. Uh, but then if I create a short circuit condition on the output side of this power supply, you can see that I get a DC low voltage indicator on my power supply. Power supply makes a little bit of a buzzing noise, but I've just lost 24 volt DC power to everything on the output of this power supply. And now I have to go figure out where that problem exists. Once I eliminate the short circuit, the, DC, the, the power supply goes back to normal operation, and now my control circuit has its power again. As you can see, if this power supply went out to 10 or 15 different circuits, a whole bunch of sensors, a whole bunch of actuators, if I had a short circuit in any of those circuits, I lose 24 volt DC power to everything in that control, uh, circuit, in that control circuit on the output side of that power supply. So that brings in the value of the Siemens electronic diagnostic module uh, that would be wired on the output side of the power supply. So in this case, you can see I have a 24 volt DC uh, motor running uh, off of a power supply that's run through this diagnostic module. And now I'm gonna induce a uh, short circuit on this particular uh, output. So I press that button, I induce the short circuit I get immediate indication on that diagnostic module of the specific circuit that has, has the problem and the rest of my circuits stay live with 24 volt DC power as indicated by these green lights. So if I release this button, it takes about um, it takes some time for, the, for the, the, uh, the fault to clear. I can see now my red light is flashing and I can press the button right on the front of this unit and now I reset the circuit I've, I've repaired my short circuit, and now everything is back up and running again. So as you can see, if I take the output of my power supply and I wire it through the diagnostic module, the diagnostic module then breaks me out into individual circuits that have their own overload settings via a dial, and I can use these buttons on the front of the unit as on-off points to be able to turn the circuits on and off for testing purposes, or that's also my diagnostics when, when, it, when there's a problem on a specific circuit, that unit will trip unlike those miniature circuit breakers and those fuses. Uh, so we put these on the output side of our power supply so we get those diagnostics and we don't take the complete control system down. Uh, some other features that come into this, there's, there's obviously the, the overload dials here uh, for, for the output uh, monitoring of the current. Uh, there's also some dip switches so that we can offset the startup of these. We can actually offset the power up uh, of these individual circuits so that we don't get too much of a high inrush uh, as, the, as the complete circuit powers up. Um, and then we also have some, some diagnostic uh, status uh, contacts that we can use to, to wire back to a PLC or stack lights or whatever, uh, whatever you might need. So these units come in uh, two different flavors. 
Uh, there's a four circuit version, as I have here, kind of in the Siemens uh, logo power supply form factor. Uh, like I said, four circuits. Uh, each circuit can be uh, from 0.5 to 5 amps, or then you can go 3 to 10 amps on the, on the larger um, amperage units. And Siemens actually just released a newer form factor of that. Uh, same functionality, it's still got the dials for the, for the overload settings, but now we actually have eight circuits on the output side of this. So you want to take that larger 40 amp power supply, break it down into eight different circuits, you can do it with this guy here. Now, the next uh, logical question would be, why not build that functionality directly into the power supply? Well, that's exactly what Siemens has done. So here I have the, uh, the CTOP PSU 8600, and you can see on the front, I've got those same four buttons that, that I was showing on the, on the demonstration unit here. So same functionality, on off buttons for the individual circuits, uh, diagnostic indication for the status of those circuits. Uh, I've got the dials on the bottom so that I can set what I want my overload current to be for each circuit. And then this one even goes a step further. I can actually dial in what voltage I want on the output of each circuit. Lots of situations today where we've got multiple power supplies in a single control panel because we might have a 12 volt DC application and a 24 volt DC application in the same, uh, the same control system. Well, usually that's multiple power supplies. In that, this case, we can dial in that voltage to each individual circuit as to what we need. Take it one step further, there's also a two port ethernet switch on the bottom of this power supply. That means that this is a Profinet IO device. I can connect this up to my PLC. I can remotely control what those output voltage levels are. I can monitor over my automation network what the status of these individual circuits are, get diagnostics back when things go wrong, and also reset them remotely. Uh, this is also an OPC UA server, so all that data is available to third-party systems, SCADA systems through, via OPC UA as well. So, uh, the, to wrap up here, diagnostics on a 24 volt DC circuit can, can cause a lot of downtime if you don't know what's going on. If you've got 20 sensors and you don't know which one has worn off its, its insulation on its wiring, created a short circuit, trying to hunt that down can be very difficult. But if you have the proper diagnostics on the output of your power supply, you can narrow it down to specific circuits and get that diagnosed and reset very quickly. Thanks a lot for your time.